This is my new plane, Hobby King F4U Corsair. Now they call this plane plug and fly. And as you can see from the things that are here, it's not exactly what I would call plug and fly. I would call it almost ready to fly if I were being honest about it. See this little wire here with the two screws? That's my foam cutter. Anyway, let me go over the pieces. First off, here is the tail. Nice tail. Of course, all this is EPO foam, which means it's going to be nice and strong, but it's going to be a little heavy. I've got a couple of spare props. This here is the rod for the elevator. This is some one hour epoxy. I'll tell you why I use this stuff. First off, it's so strong. Secondly, it doesn't bother any of the uh, foam. And the only disadvantage to it is that it takes an hour just to set up and uh, more than that to uh, make it so that it's permanent. Here we have the canopy. You will see on the boards and everything that the canopy has been complained about a lot. It doesn't quite fit, and uh, they're right about that. On the bottom side, you'll see I trimmed a little bit out because there's some spots where it hits. There are two magnets in here, and they're nice and strong. And there's a little spot here that doesn't quite fit the trim, so, so I, I trimmed that out a little bit. And now the canopy fits fairly decent. Still has a little bit of a gap in it, but it fits fairly well. It's good enough for something that you're going to be beating up and flying around. This here is my receiver. Switch over to close-up mode. This is a uh, FlySky 6-channel receiver. That will bind perfectly fine with my Turnigy 9X. I have one in my Tiger Moth and it works just fine. Here we have the Turnigy Nanotech. This is the 850 milliamp hour 45C to 90C discharge um, lithium polymer battery. I've got two of these. They say you can fly this thing on a 3S or a 4S, and I went for the 4S. Reason why I went for the 4S is a couple reasons. One of them is that if it if it gets me bored on the 3S, I've got you know then I'd have to go buy new batteries. But the other reason is that on the 4S, if I'm really if it's really too fast and I'm really getting you know over my head with that, I can handle that. Um, I can set the transmitter so that it'll just barely fly if I really wanted to. I think that I'm going to be fine because I'm careful on the sticks. You can see here, this is the fuselage. Inside, I'll give you a close-up look of that. Inside, we've got all kinds of nice little things. Here is our speed controller. I've also been told that these tend to burn out in 4S. And some nice graphics. Nice graphics. And this thing has got a gorgeous motor in it, nice and big for this little tiny plane. Um, and the prop is a 4.5 by 4, or a 5.5 by 4.5 prop. Uh, just two blade, and of course, a few of the scale buffs will know that uh, that uh, we we don't um, they don't they never ran two blade prop on an F4U Corsair. What they did do was they ran three blade and four blade. Um, I'm not worried about scale in this particular plane. If I was, then I would have bought something that was a little more scale. What are you complaining about, Fido? What are you complaining about, huh? Huh? A little pain in the neck. 
my dog saying, hey, I want more attention. Anyway, here are all the parts. Okay, well, here is my Turna G9X. This is the transmitter we're going to be using for uh, flying this plane. Yes, I know it's overkill, but it's the transmitter I use on my other planes. So, I like only having to carry one transmitter to the field. So, that's what we're going to do. Now, this plane is only three channels. Okay, it has throttle, elevator, and ailerons. It does not have a rudder. It does not have landing gear. Okay, no landing gear. You really don't need the rudder. Okay, most people fly with ailerons anyway. Most people are bank and yank, and this is a bank and yank plane. Okay, not a problem. One of the neat little things about it is that it has two separate servos. Look at this, will ya? You've got a servo here, 9 gram, and another 9 gram servo right here. What this means to those people out there can you guess well if you can't guess then I'll tell you you could do this flapper on set this thing up you can set this up in, in turn a G9X as a matter of fact we'll do this um, set it up for flapper on and use two of the channels instead of one for the for the uh, ailerons once you've got flapper on set up then you can uh, you can bring this in pretty pretty light, you know, pretty slow, and you can get this thing on the ground a lot slower. I'm only going to do that if it's necessary, but I can do it if I wish. Um, if I, uh, you know, that's another reason why I'm using a six-channel uh, radio control uh, radio control receiver in this. Of course, you know, having six channels is awesome. Uh, it's a, again, it's a little overkill because it's only a three-channel radio. But if I needed to run flap around, I've got a fourth channel to work with. No worries there. Um, it's A-OK -okay to do that. Also, too, I only pay like $7 for these receivers. These, these receivers are like nothing. So why not have the extra channels there? It's not heavy. There's not a weight issue. And even if there was a weight issue, I could always pull the case off of it and get, get a few grams off of it. Um, once I get this thing together, then we'll be balancing it out, see where it balances, see where it goes, and uh, get her flying. I'm very happy to see that they've got a couple of extra props with this thing.